Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute. This is case 40 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. It is a case of a large vessel perforation in which we were unable to deliver a covered stand to seal the perforation. This was a patient with a mid right coronary CTO. There is severe calcification in the entire right coronary artery. However, there is a fairly clear proximal cap. The occlusion appears to be relatively short, about 20 to 30 millimeters, and the distal vessel is uh, diffusely diseased with severe calcification, which would make probably hard to re-enter in case of subintimal guide wire entry. However, we also had uh, uh, collaterals from the septum, from the left system into the PDA and the distal right coronary artery. We, we determined that since there was a clear proximal cap, the vessel was not perfect but okay, we would first try with an undergrade approach with retrograde bailout if the undergrade approach was not working. And we actually did try that. We just uh, did the injections through a six French catheter on the left and then trying to engage the right coronary with an amplitude guide that was not successful. We finally were engaged with a JR4 eight French guide catheter. However, we had significant difficulty with um, um, advancing equipment across that area of occlusion. This is a Corsair with various guide wires and it appears that the guide wire may be in the subintimal plane. We also tried the cross post catheter but we had similar difficulties with advancing further past the occlusion given the severe calcification. We initially tried uh, through the radial approach for one of the guides, however, the support was poor, and that is why we changed into an 8 friends by femoral system. Since uh, we had no good luck with um, undergrade crossing, we switched to the retrograde approach, and uh, we were able to cross relatively easily through the septum and advance the guide wire. This was a CM guide wire all the way to the distal uh, PDA then advance the coarser catheter, we're able to do a reverse card and externalize the guide wire. The Corsair remains in place to protect the septal, but everything seemed to be going well. We placed several stents that restored undergrade flow into the right coronary artery. There remained, however, some area of dissection, poor coverage in the distal RCA, and therefore we did place an additional stent to cover the entire RCA from the ostium to the crux, which is not uncommon for right coronary artery CTOs. Everything is going great and we're doing our just final balloon post dilations make sure the stand is in good shape when this occurred. There was a balloon rupture and then the next, uh, the next image demonstrated this very large perforation. It's almost 10 millimeter neck of the crater with massive bleeding from the right coronary artery. This is an example of a main vessel perforation in contrast to distal wire perforation and epicardial collateral perforations. And the management of it is similar to any other perforation with the very first step being inflation of a balloon to occlude the vessel, then doing pericardiocentesis, giving fluids if the patient develops hypotension, and also notifying the surgeons in case they have to go in if the perforation cannot be treated percutaneously. Balloon inflation in some cases, some occasions, small perforations might seal the perforation. However, if it does not, if it's a large vessel perforation, we we'll usually place a cover stand. Whereas if it is a, a distal vessel perforation, we we'll do embolization or place a cover stand over the origin of the perforated branch. In this particular case, we did try to deliver a graft master stand. However, to our surprise, despite having an externalized guide wire, which does provide tremendous support, probably because of the severe calcification, we were unable to deliver a cover stand to the mid right coronary artery. You actually almost lost the stand a few times. So you have the situation with a significant large vessel perforation. It even seems there are two areas of contrast leaking in this particular view and unable to deliver a cover stand. So we did call our surgeons who were there and they said they would potentially take him if this wouldn't seal, but they would encourage us to try a little longer. So we did spend quite some time. We placed balloons to occlude uh, that area for prolonged periods of time. 
we did not reverse the heparin because we're concerned for clot formation especially since you had an externalized system and clotting the left main would be a catastrophic event so we let the heparin drift a little bit but the patient did have some some leaking the balloon uh, continued to be inflated we had to place a drain because he did develop um, tamponade during uh, those attempts so we had to drain the blood but to our good um, fortune eventually after three hours there was hemostasis achieved after prolonged balloon inflations there's hemostasis in that part of the vessel there's still a little aneurysmal formation but no free extravasation we did uh, double check that by giving echo contrast which was not leaking into the pericardial space and the patient did have an uneventful recovery so this case provides some important lesson the first is that balloon rupture can lead to perforation as we've seen in other cases as well and therefore if you have that you're going to do an injection as soon as possible to, de to determine if perforation has occurred and if that's the case inflate a balloon the second is that uh, in rare cases of large vessel perforation in which a covered stent cannot be delivered, then prolonged balloon inflation can eventually achieve hemostasis, but this requires a lot of patience and a lot of time. And in general, we do not want to reverse the heparin until after the guide wires are removed from the coronary, because leaving them in could cause clotting, especially in this case in which we had a retrograde system and had wires and microcatheters into the left main. If left main thrombosis had occurred, the patient most likely would have died. Thank you very much.